Okay guys, who has the best nine inch cordless cutoff saw? We took a look at three of the top operating saws. Uh, we looked at DeWalt, Husqvarna, Milwaukee. Steel declined to participate, so we couldn't, we couldn't put them in this test. A cutoff saw or an abrasive saw, it's a circular saw. And it's typically used to cut metal or masonry. The cutting actions is performed by an abrasive disc or a diamond disc, and it's similar to a, cut, um, a grinding wheel. Technically speaking, it's not a saw, but that's what we call it. So uh, in 2015, Steel was the first company to introduce the nine inch cordless cutoff saw, battery operated. Husqvarna was second, and both of those tools were 36 volts. Then in 2018, DeWalt introduced their 60 volt flex volt version, which we reviewed last winter and have been using on our job sites ever since. Last to market was Milwaukee this fall of 2019. So who would use a saw like this? It's a fair question. The toolbox buzz feels, the toolbox buzz crew feels that it, it's not an entry level tool. It's more of an expansion tool for folks already on that platform. In fact, we refer to this as an 80% tool, meaning that this tool can do 80% of the tasks that a gas saw can do. They make fast cuts in pipe and masonry, and they can be used in, in occupied spaces. Some of the advantages are fast ramp up, no gas, no fumes, way less noise and vibration, and they're way lighter and easier to use overhead. As far as the specifications, features, and some of the specs that we looked at, all of those details are in the Toolbox Buzz website article. We actually have a section, a head-to-head -head section, that has all of our tests, so you can check them out there. On this particular valuation, uh, the tests that we selected give you a good, relative, measurable comparison of runtime and, and cut speeds. And we feel that these tests give you a good baseline of the overall tool performance. Several test simulations we used and are considered typical tasks that a contractor might use this software. And these tasks um, simulations included things like cutting CMU block, concrete block, cutting solid concrete block that has a very consistent matrix and they're made in large precast batches. Uh, we cut number five rebar and we gang cut um, five pieces of number five rebar. We also did full depth cuts in three inch granite paver slabs as well as we cut into quarter inch steel thick C channel. So the cutoff testing categories, in addition to the simulations and the cuts, the crew members spent time using these saws and, and, and cutting into different materials. And they wanted to basically to evaluate these saws independently. So we looked at things like size, weight, features, performance, ergonomics, price, and lastly, best in class. And we derived that from all of the above. So as far as size and weight, the winner of the size and weight category was Husqvarna. The length, width, and height of the cutting saws were used to determine cubic volume. In the accompanying graph, the left column is the size ranking of the saw, and the right column is the weight of the saw. The Husqvarna is noticeably smaller and lighter than the other two, just the way it is. Then we looked at best features. The winner of that was DeWalt. The team felt the DeWalt beat out the Milwaukee and the Husqvarna by two and three points respectively. Uh, the DeWalt has an excellent discard, water feed system, base plate, and battery compartment design. Milwaukee excelled of the, in their heavy load indicator light and their tool management, which is their one key. Um, they took the number two slot in every other category in that features test. Husqvarna excelled in a safety switch, their water valve location, and lanyard hook. They came in in a solid second place in tool management with their save E function and their shoe plate design. As far as standout features, all three saws have different things. It's one thing that we rated them and, and throw a number at you. It's another to actually explain the differences and maybe give you some detailed information. So let's talk about some of the standout features. First of all, I want to talk to, talk to you about the cutting disc guard on the saws. All three tools have three different disc guard, disc guard designs. Both DeWalt Milwaukee saws have adjustable guards that offer an excellent range of adjustment. The difference in the two is how the guard is adjusted. The Husqvarna guard is fixed. You get what you get. It is what it is. The DeWalt, going back to the DeWalt, uses a five position system that allows you to move and click it, position and click it, lock it in place. Milwaukee has a friction guide that allows you to adjust the guide without having to be limited to preset detents. 
Now, many gas tools have friction adjustments and they all work great when new. The only issue that we have is that some of, over time, crud and grit get inside that guard and freeze up. All right, uh, time uh, tool management. Husqvarna has a feature that they call on their keypad, call, keypad, and they call it Save E. And this feature, it decreases blade speed, not power, and gives you longer runtime. Now, Milwaukee is the only tool that offers true built-in tool management. They have a one key system that many of you are familiar with, and it gives you three options only on this tool. It allows you to track the tool, if it's lost or stolen, that's huge. It allows you to lock the tool out from unauthorized users for safety and security. And then there's an inventory management included in the app. Uh, let's talk about the onboard storage wrench. A lot of controversy with these three saws amongst us. Removing the disks on these tools, on all three tools, were easy. The DeWalt stores an onboard wrench in their battery compartment and you'll never lose it. It's, it's locked in there, it's, it's, it's perfect. DeWalt also has a spindle lock that you have to hold with one hand to lock that drive shaft and, lock, and then you have to use you know, the wrench on the arbor nut, the disc arbor nut. Husqvarna wrench is excellent, but there's no place to store it on the tool. It has the easiest push button spindle lock of all three saws. The push button actually has a rubber boot on it to protect it from slurry and water spray, stuff like that, sparks. Milwaukee has two tools at the rear of it, and they all store on board. It's a wrench and an Allen wrench. Um, so the Allen wrench indexes into a hole to lock the shaft, and that frees up your hand, allowing you to access the, the disc arbor nut. The team felt that while Husqvarna had the best spindle lock with their one wrench system, uh, not having onboard storage you know, was a major drawback. Let's talk about water feed. All three uh, saws had water feed on both sides of the blade. The DeWalt hose is different. It's protected inside the tool, and then it comes out and transitions at the guard at the handle. And this encased and shrouding of the hose protects it. It's going to protect it from snag and damage over time. Both Husqvarna and Milwaukee both have exposed hoses that are susceptible to sn uh, snagging and damage. And look, history has proven with the big gas models out there that exposed hoses over time, they get hung up on metal and masonry, they snag and they rip off. Uh, as far as the water nipples, the DeWalt uses stainless steel, Husqvarna is made of brass and polymer, and Milwaukee uses a nickel-plated aluminum. None of these saws suffered from water flow issues, which was great. Um, heavy load indicator. DeWalt and Milwaukee both have what's called a heavy load indicator light that lights up. This light basically tells a user when the tool is working too hard or hard, and it allows you to reduce pressure for more battery life. Um, it gives you real-time power and runtime feedback during demanding applications. Husqvarna has an indicator that allows you or advises you for overloading and overheating of the tool or when it needs servicing. Now, when seeing the indicator light, both DeWalt and Milwaukee say backing off cutting pressure is going to increase runtime. Milwaukee says pushing their tool harder does not give you more on their tool, does not get you more. While DeWalt says go get it. You push if you need more power, but if you, you're going to sacrifice runtime. We were able to stall all three saws during cutting if you apply too much pressure. So when pressing too hard, you can actually hear the saw struggle, indicating you're just gonna back off slightly. And we quickly got used to this and adjusted accordingly. And we found each tool's sweet spot. And that's where you wanna operate it. Let's talk about the drive systems. What, what gets these things going? Drive belt versus belt driven. Well, DeWalt uses a drive system. It's called a Lovejoy cone coupling. And they say it's more efficient than a belt and helps minimize vibration. Husqvarna and Milwaukee both use a belt drive system and we noticed that the belt drive saws were smoother cutters and vibrated way less. So we're not really in agreement with DeWalt on that. The Milwaukee um, vibrates, in fact, under half of the vibration of the DeWalt. And if you want to read about that, you got to go to the article for the specs. As far as tool handles, all three have front handles that can be held in three different positions for vertical, horizontal, and overhead type cutting. The DeWalt's front rubberized handle looks a whole lot like the Husqvarna in shape. The Husqvarna handle has a little bit more hand room than the other three, and it's we think it would allow nicely for winter gloved operation. The handle has a smaller diameter, um, I keep looking over at the tools, and a gradual curve that is comfortable to use. The handle's slight slope uh, was no doubt a design that uh, was thought of for user support hand and wrist comfort and elbow comfort. Milwaukee cutoff tool has thick rubber rear handle and a much thinner front smoother handle. 
That handle design is straight across. Uh, gives you a little bit more room for uh, glove user, but also left and right use. You don't have that, that slope. Now, the tools have these base shoes on the bottom of the plates. DeWalt's is wider than one would think it would need to be, and the team felt that the shoe provided excellent pivot point for plunge cutting. Husqvarna provides a wide metal shoe plate as well, and it also has two rubber little feet on it, and that keeps the tool from sliding off surfaces. Milwaukee had a really small one, and smaller than the other two. Overall, the team felt that the wider base plates provided better protection, better perpendicular plunging, and better stability side to side when cutting. Okay, next we looked at the safety switches. The DeWalt has a manual push button on off switch that locks the tool. Once activated on, the tool is live. You just pull the trigger, it goes. Husqvarna has an on off keypad switch, which times out after one minute of use. So while this is outstanding as a safety feature, the team often would pick up the tool to use it and were annoyed that they had to turn the saw back on repeatedly. The Husqvarna rear handle also has what's called a power trigger lockout safety switch, very similar to what a chainsaw has. Now Milwaukee uses a dual trigger which encompasses a small little trigger safety spring flap on the main trigger. The spring loaded flap needs to be depressed before it allows the trigger to be activated. Uh, water, the water valve feature, the water feed valve DeWalt uses a T-handle valve knob that is very easy to operate. The, the ease to operate equated to a little bit of valve slop, and we, meaning that the, the valve kind of moves side to side. Mil, uh, Husqvarna separated their valve knob and they put it up away from the nipple and they put it up by the handle. Real easy to reach and real nice to uh, operate and activate. Milwaukee uses a T-style or half-style knob, which we found very stiff to operate, but super secure and durable. All three tools, dual-sided water system that is OSHA Table 1 compliant for dust management. Uh, as far as cutting depth, let me see, the DeWalt can cut at 3 and 3 eighths deep, the Husqvarna was 3 inches deep, and Milwaukee was 3 and a half inches deep. So Milwaukee just beats it out by a little bit. Uh, okay, now that we talked about features, let's get back to that head-to-head -head test that we did, and let's look at runtime. And the winner of that was the DeWalt, and we used several large 3-inch thick slabs of granite Fully charged batteries, same diamond blades for this test, and after scribing lines on the granite, we had the same operators cut slices into the granite using the cooling, the water cooling systems on the tools. We were careful not to push the saws too hard in this test and monitored those load indicator lights we talked about to ensure that we didn't do excessive pressure. And we continued to cut until the tool could no longer cut granite. This is a hard test. Both DeWalt and Milwaukee had thermal overloads activate before their batteries were exhausted. And we felt that the enclosed battery compartments maybe contributed to this by keeping heat in and overheating quicker. Uh, we allowed the hot batteries to cool down a bit. We continued cutting and then the batteries, uh, until the batteries registered no power. Husqvarna, on the other hand, is not an enclosed battery compartment, so it did not have a thermal issue. Let's see, the DeWalt cut three inch thick solid granite for a distance of six feet nine and three quarters of an inch on a single battery charge. Milwaukee six feet four and Husqvarna five feet seven and three quarters. Um, we looked at cuts per watt hour. The DeWalt Milwaukee saws they they can they have options of a 12 amp hour battery. The Husqvarna is a 9.4 amp hour battery. By using watt hours total battery pack power we can level the playing field for both for wattage and amp hours. Watt hours is calculated by multiplying the actual voltage by the battery pack amp hours. And this calculation allows us to compare total energy available to do the work based on the voltage and size of the battery pack amp hours. The result showed that Husqvarna is slightly a more efficient cutting machine. Unfortunately, Husqvarna saws do not currently come or offer a battery larger than the standard 9.4 amp hour battery pack. Um, Okay, we looked at performance or speed testing, and the winner of the speed test was Milwaukee. In this test, we used a three inch granite, and we wanted to see which saw was capable of cutting the most granite in one minute. The operator pushed each saw to the point of the overload light coming on or the RPM decreasing, and then would back off that pressure. And again, we want to find that sweet spot where the tool just operates for the material cutting. The test was timed and stopped after one minute of cutting, Distance cut was measured, and it was measured at the bottom of the saw blade curve. The Milwaukee cut slightly faster than the DeWalt and almost twice as fast as the Husqvarna. Now, steel cutting performance, that's speed as well, and the winner of that 
was DeWalt. The performance of the three saws were evaluated cutting steel, and we put the saws through paces, cutting things like five ganged up pieces of number five rebar. Uh, we cut single rebar, and we also cut uh, structural steel seat channel, quarter inch thick. The toolbox bus crew kept the saws spinning at or near their sweet spots for the performance by modulating the saw pressure, the pressure of the saws. The DeWalt was the fastest cutting and that was 14.7 seconds. Milwaukee was 19.2, almost 33% longer. Husqvarna was 35.6, which is 2.4 times the DeWalt time. In both steel cutting tests, the DeWalt roughly, up of, basically outperformed the other saws. In the um, four inch steel C channel, DeWalt was the fastest cutting, and that was at 20 seconds, almost twice as fast as the Milwaukee and four times faster than Husqvarna. So the Milwaukee saw was 30.4 seconds and the Husqvarna was 80.5 seconds. And that's quarter inch thick C-channel steel. Um, all right, ergonomics. We looked at ergonomics and the winner of that was Husqvarna. Ergonomics plays a big role in evaluation and testing. And not only does a tool need to perform well, but it's got to, it's important that it's, the tools are comfortable, which ultimately I think relates to more productivity and reduce risk of injury. So for the ergonomics evaluation, the team evaluated uh, uh, the following criteria. We looked at the grips, the handles, the blade guard, disc change, power switch, battery changing, vibration, balance, and of course, maneuverability. And it, on each category, we ranked them one, two, or three. One being the best, three being the least. Much of the ergonomics evaluation came from the team members using the cutoff saws during our testing. Each team member used each tool cutting different materials to get a relative comparison of each of each tool. The Husqvarna beat the DeWalt by one point and the Milwaukee by six. The Husqvarna excelled in almost every category but lost points due to its fixed guard that we talked about, the disc guard, multiple switch operation, and lack of onboard tool, tool storage for the changing of the disc. Overall, the team felt that the Husqvarna was the nicest, smoothest operating saw we tested. Both DeWalt and Milwaukee saws came out after the uh, Husqvarna. Obviously, they had time to improve their design, which was, you know, it's a compliment. Uh, the DeWalt was one point behind excelling in, uh, in improvements on the grip, the guard, and the trigger switch. Milwaukee excelled in the grip and was consistently second in almost every category except blade change and uh, maneuverability. All right, we looked at price. Price is important, and DeWalt took that. For this head-to-head, -head, we looked at bare tool pricing to eliminate discrepancies in the, in the composition of the kits. DeWalt comes with a nine amp hour battery, Milwaukee comes with 12, Husqvarna is different. When you look at bare tool pricing though, DeWalt is lower than its competitors and competitor, uh, competitive pricing. Keep in mind that we tested the DeWalt with a 12 amp hour battery. And at the time of this publication, it doesn't come with a 12 amp hour battery, it comes with a nine amp hour battery. The Milwaukee kit does come with a 12 amp hour battery and definitely adds value. So DeWalt's gonna be around 550 bucks, Husqvarna around 600, and Milwaukee about 600 for a bare tool. Okay, who has the best cordless cutoff saw? DeWalt. The saw looks, feels, and performs like a pro grade tool. It's pretty, it was pretty obvious during our testing that the DeWalt was a powerful cutter and our results showed that when we compiled our numbers. The DeWalt took first place in five categories, second place in two categories for a total of eight total points. First place categories were features, runtime, two cutting speed tests in steel and bare tool price evaluation. Milwaukee came in second with 12 total points. The Milwaukee took first place in granite speed test third place in ergonomic, second place in every single other category. It is a powerful, fast, and solid performing saw. Following up in third place with 16 points was the Husqvarna, which took first place in ergonomics, second place in price, and third, third place in every other category. The Husqvarna has been around a lot longer than the other two saws, and it hasn't benefited from a Gen 2 upgrade yet, but if they do, watch out. Okay, final thoughts on all this. So why would you want a cordless cutoff saw? Hopefully I answered the question, but the simplest answer is that these saws are an extremely versatile solution for cutting a large variety of materials. These tools have advanced and harnessed cordless technology to deliver the power to cut metal and masonry materials 
without gas, like most traditional cutoff saws, and that's a win in our book. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please subscribe. Follow us at Toolbox Buzz on Instagram, Facebook, Concord Carpenter on Instagram, Facebook, and don't forget our website at toolboxbuzz.com. I'm Rob Robillard, and I will see you at the next tool review. Take care.